dog food. A lot of our viewers um, ask us on Monday Night Live, how do you make your dog food? What's in your dog food? So today we're gonna show you exactly what we put in our dog food. So we're doing a triple batch. Um, I will put a single batch recipe below this video and you can double it or triple it, but this will probably make maybe 20 loaves and we cut those into four pieces for Eddie. So that will last him quite a while. And this little one loves it. We don't give it to her all the time, but we give her a scoop. So eventually she will be switched to the homemade dog food. We're working on it. So we have ground turkey, ground beef, and I am putting some chicken gizzards in today because we need a little more organ meat. She likes this. <laughs> Celery. We have green peppers, we have zucchini, we have carrots, sweet potatoes. I'll be doing three small apples. Of course, we're going to peel them and take the seeds out. Uh, we have peas, we have broccoli. I may add a little more broccoli than that. And we have green beans and I will use that whole bag. Uh, this is brown rice. So I'll probably put two or three cups of brown rice in there. Where are you going? I have oatmeal, two cups, three cups possibly of oatmeal, and canned tomatoes. These are diced. I'm gonna leave them just the way they are. They'll get um, mushed up as I stir the food with my hands, and a dozen eggs. And we will grind the shells in with the eggs so that they get the egg shell for calcium. So I think that's it. Um, I'm gonna get to shredding and we'll show it to you before we mix it so you can see all the goodies that we put inside. She's giving me kisses as she bites my arm. <laughs> She's cute. <laughs> all right guys, we'll see you in a bit. Hey guys, welcome back. Got all the veggies ground up. We have broccoli and green beans and peas, carrots, all the yummies that I showed you in the beginning. So now it's all in there. I'm just going to blend it just a little bit. Just to get it incorporated because when we add the meat then we won't have to try to mix it all together. It smells yummy. It's just all veggies with tomatoes. Alright, so now I need oatmeal. My hands are a mess. I'm going to take my gloves off to do this. At least one of them. So I need two cups of oatmeal, maybe I'll do three. Since I'm doing a triple batch, might as well. well. <laughs> it's a rough job. I just don't want to get juice on my oatmeal container. Okay. So then I need um, brown rice, so I'm going to do three cups. This is already cooked. I did it the night before, so I didn't have to worry about cooking it the day of. It takes 45 minutes to cook, so I'm going to make sure start that first before you do the dog food. Okay, let's set that aside. All right, so then I did mix, I ground the chicken gizzards. And then added my ground eggs to the same bowl. So this is kind of gross. Doesn't smell pretty either. But the dogs will love it. But you can see all the eggshells. And that's what they need for calcium. So if you go ahead and do this dog food, you're going to have to still give your dog a multivitamin. At least you should. Because I don't think they get as much nutrition. There's no additives in homemade dog food like there is in the bag stuff. So what we give Eddie these and now have those in my Amazon shop so that you know which ones I get. So before I mix the meat in, I want to cut that packaging. You don't have to buy a butter ball. You don't have to buy anything expensive. 
I just bought this because it was on sale and it was easy to open. <laughs> Be prepared, your kitchen will be a mess when you make this. You'll have shredded veggies everywhere. I have a plastic apron on so I can just throw it away when I'm done because I always get this stuff all over me. And then my ground beef which is probably going to be messy when I open that. So this is my first time making a triple batch. This is a 30 quart bowl. Um, I looked at them on Amazon. They're really expensive. So if you can order it from like Kitchen Restock or some other restaurant supply place, if you're going to do big batches, I suggest that. So the puppy is sleeping. She got tired of listening to the grinder. <laughs> so now we want to mix this just like we would meatloaf. And it actually smells pretty good when it's cooking. But don't eat it because there's eggshells in there. But you could. If you didn't have the eggshells, you probably could. So I want to get all that meat broke up first. Let's give you a workout, let me tell you. That's why I make doubles and triple batches because I don't want to do it all the time. I'm going to get right in there, get those veggies incorporated in that meat. like I can spin my bowl. So I'm going to continue to mix this guys and I'll bring you back when we're ready to load it into the pans so it's eating a little better. So now we are ready to pan. We have quite a bit of food here. Actually I think I'm going to have more than 12, probably 20. So what I do to fill the pan, I turn it sideways like this. I just take one healthy scoop and just pop it in there. You don't want to overfill these because they do have a lot of juice when they're done. So you want to be able to pour that juice off and you don't want it to spill all over inside your oven. There's another gizzard skin. I'm going to remember next time to cut that off before. I grind them. Another one. Now I do the parchment paper in these not to keep the pans because these are disposable pans. You can wash them and reuse them but um, I just don't have time for that. <laughs> So we use them for other stuff after we're done. We won't wash them out and uh, put bacon grease and stuff in them when we need to throw stuff away. So why I have that parchment paper over the sides is when they're done and they're starting to cool, you can pull them out. Nice big piece of carrot there or sweet potato, one or the other. Tuck it down in, it'll cook and get soft. So when these come out of the oven, you're just gonna pull this up and they should pop out. I did pre-spray these pans with um, canola oil, so it shouldn't stick at all. And it does shrink as it cooks, but like I said, you don't wanna overfill these. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill all my pans, get them in the oven, and when we come back, I'll show you what they look like when they're done and then I'll show you how to cut them. Hi guys, so we're back. We're all baked, so I'm gonna show you now how I cut them. 
put them in baggies and put them in a freezer bag. And Ellie is not going to help me because this she loves this food. She actually goes a little batshit crazy when she gets up. So I'm going to put her down to keep her occupied on something else. So what I'm going to do when I pick these up is make sure I get all the juice out. Because you don't want them wet, wet. I just keep putting my juice in a bowl and then Alan can pour that out outside. So I'm going to cut this into four because Eddie is 38 pounds. So he gets one of these a day and then he has like a moist kibble that he gets in the morning to pick at if he's hungry. But because he's sharing with Ellie, that's not a ton of food, but when you break it up, it fills up a plate because it's pretty solid. So we just do that, and then we put seven in a bag and stick them in the freezer so that we have a whole week's worth, and when we need one, we take the whole bag out of the freezer and put the rest in the refrigerator so it's there um, and thawed out for the next day. You don't have to be perfect on cutting them. Because um, I'm sure if you give your dog treats and other stuff, they're getting plenty of food. The vet tells me that this is actually too much food for him. Because um, when you're doing a homemade dog food, there's no filler in this. It's There's no junk. Everything in there is something he should have. So he, he should actually be gaining weight on this. So we keep eye on him, make sure he's not getting fat. So we don't want a fat dog. <laughs> we want him slim, trim, and healthy. So I'll do one more so I can fill that bag, and then I'll have Eddie's dinner for tonight, nice fresh one. Then Ellie will get her little share. So just pop it up, pour off your juice. Sometimes your loaf might slip off that paper. Try to keep your hands tight on it. It's kind of a messy job, but um, knowing that my dog's not getting anything that could be tainted, you know how we have the recalls on dog food, I don't have to worry about it because I know what's in this. That's very important to me to know what my dogs are eating. There are also recipes out there for homemade cat food. Um, we don't have a cat anymore or I would be trying one of those. But I, this is kind of a combination of several people's recipes that we found Eddie would never eat carrots or celery or anything before, and now he eats tons of it. So he's got a ton of veggies in here, but he also has a ton of protein. So he's got those chicken gizzards and that turkey and a little bit of ground beef. So there's my seven, and there's his dinner. So that's it guys, um, we ended up getting that many, I think we're 16 meatloafs. So we'll be cutting all those into fours and that should last them about a month and a half with her eating with him. And um, we'll be doing it all over again. <laughs> but thanks so much for watching and if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. Please share this video with your friends if they have dogs. It's inexpensive. It cost us about maybe 30 bucks to make all this food. And it'll last him two months, but it's the healthiest stuff he's going to get. And uh, the recipe is down below in the description for one batch. Uh, we did three batches. You can always add more oatmeal and more brown rice for filler. Um, but not don't increase the vegetables. So but thanks for watching. I'll see you again. Bye now. Thank <laughs> you.